Let's all go to the hot springs. Oh, Let's God, all talk about nasty. <laughs> Gordy is on the loose. Yeah, so, right? What was our phrase? Oh, it's like ghosts or butt. There uh, are no ghosts, just beckoning flowers. Yes, they, they bring that up a lot. So uh, the gang all goes to a hot spring owned by Ibarra's family, uh, and they couldn't really get any people for the season, so they're there during a spring festival time. That's right, and they're a newly constructed half of the building. Sure looks nicer than the other half of the building. Especially because one half is haunted. Oh, no. Ooh. A, a salary man might have hanged himself in that building. Yeah, you know, it, it is a story told by uh, a sixth grader and a like eighth grader. I was ready to rip it apart because it had no beginning, middle, or end. I was really ready to criticize. Well, to it. be fair, Areki did pass out for half of it, and we only got like the latter half. That's true. Um, Fukube was freaking out over the story, which was hysterical. Tell me more! Tell me more! Did she put up a fight? <laughs> no. All right. Uh, but before we get into the meat of the mystery, uh, one thing I, I do want to, like, give kudos to this show for is, uh, like, the kind of... It's not over-the-top censoring. Because, like, obviously, like, you know, the hot spring scene, people are going to be naked. But, like, the, the second Araki goes to take off a towel, like, a kid's head walks by. It was almost Austin Powers levels of just, like, kid walks in, Oreki's butt is not shown. Yeah, or, or, or like, a floating pot goes across. Goes across. And, and it's not, like, the typical anime, oh, there's a light beam. It's just like, oh, God. At least they're, like, clever with it, and they do stuff with it. Yeah. And they don't make it uncomfortable. It felt almost natural. Yeah. Um, Oreki's starting to kind of look at Chitanda, and it's interesting how he does mm. it because it's it's not done as like a romantic gesture it's just like oh it, he's a he's an adolescent there is another girl in the other hot spring and he kind of his mind kind of wanders it kind of goes tastefully too yeah well i mean kids have hormones yeah like we're getting there and he like overheats himself he overheats himself <laughs> but and passes out in the hot spring it's not it's not overly lewd like yeah no it's we, not devil man cry baby oh i'm thinking of this horrible stuff it's yeah i'm she's in a towel i don't want to go there but then my hand kind of my, my eyes kind of wander and then i pass out yep <laughs> oh no this the girl that i just thought of is now touching my face oh god i want to get out of this situation so bad i'm gonna curl up in a ball and tell him i'm sick yep all right so let's get into the 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 beef of the first mystery we have uh a salaryman ghost hanging in a window, and uh, our, our 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 two our two girls Chitanda and Ibarra happen to see it in the middle of the night. Uh, a corpse dangling from the window across the way. What could this mean? How did they both see it? Oreki, please, I must know. It's I just my favorite part about this mystery is that um, Fukube has nothing to do with it. <laughs> he's the just guy like, come on, guys, tell me. The instigator for everything is just like absent from everything. He's sleeping in. He's like, I'm going to the hot springs all the time. And he's also the one that drops all the incidental information you need because he's the one not involved with this mystery. Yeah. So he's like, oh, here's the shortcuts I went to. They're currently doing a spring festival. Oh, yeah. uh, that's a fake. It's a fake yukata. But look, she's wearing a yukata. The the mystery didn't really feel like so much of a I need to solve this mystery so much as a vehicle for Oreki and Chitanda to get to know each other a little better. Mm, you've caught on like it. Chitanda, but Alex, Alex, where's the plot? What, what plot? <laughs> yeah. my favorite thing is the Funimation video. The streaming video, there's just the first comment is, where's the plot? All caps, a million exclamation points. Oh, man. Um, I liked, a, I really liked that this focused on Chitanda's earnest desire to have someone she could really connect to growing up mm -hmm. and to have an older sister or a little brother that she could. Or friends. Of, yeah, just something <laughs> she could bring out a personality in. She can kind of like grow her personality with um in, in her family, but. She had her uncle and she has parents that we right. don't really get to know. But whenever she sees an instant of the younger cousins hanging out, the rose colored bloom immediately appears over her. 
And then we get this dark shadow over it when we figure out what the problem was. We have the sister stealing the yukata to go to the, the spring festival unbeknownst to her sister. I love that that the reason we figured this out is because the other sister, the sister that owns the yukata, we learn is very protective of her things because she writes her name on everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and we got that sprinkled throughout the episode and it, it can kind of take a bit to catch on. But yeah. Oreki sure as hell does it. Nope. And he figures it out and goes, well, the other sister wanted to go to the ball and she took the yukata and then it rained. So she had to air out the yukata in the haunted room where yep. no one would see it except our two girls. It's really weird that out. she put a noose on the yukata too just to freak <laughs> them out extra. Yeah, and like a fake head. <laughs> Come on, people. It's obviously a hanger. Yeah. Um, I was waiting for it to come back that... Uh, that the yukata was fake with a clip on bow at the end and be like, oh, my God. But she replaced it with a real yukata. I'm just waiting for some sort of callback to that. But no, no. Kukupe is just a fashion dude. He's just like, it offends me that this man's tuxedo has a clip on tie. <laughs> um, yeah, but well, with Chitana, we kind of get like this little dark moment where she's just like, oh, no, maybe maybe they don't really like like each other maybe these siblings are like fighting all the time and I just don't see it. Like, is this just what fighting is? And Oreki. Like, he already knows because he has a sister. He's like, you know, sometimes siblings don't always agree on stuff. Yeah. You know, it's two personalities clashing, just like any other kind of, like, connected friendship. But then we walk up to one of them giving the other a piggyback, and then, oh, Chitanda's all smiles again, and she runs right up to him. But it's not an idealized rose-colored bloom. Like, but previously, when Chitanda saw the girls interacting, it was actually a filter, actually, like, a graded effect that just dawned upon her. But here, after she talks to Areki about his sister and realizes, like, he's like, I, I, I could have tried to get along with her more if I wanted to, but sometimes it happens. She kind of sees the shade of gray that's not rose or black and white. Yep. She seems it's surreal. A right natural reaction. And that's where our episode ends. And I, I really enjoyed this episode because, like we are saying before, you really get kind of a scale of Chitanda. Like, mm-hmm. she, she, she looks to the world in this very uh, idealized version, but she comes out as a better person in the end when she realizes what really she's looking at. Yeah. The world is not always peaceful, but you make the most of it. Yeah. And then you have sis- um, siblings. And then you have... Uh, this is the most like we've had our episodes of mystery. We've had the mysteries cued in from, oh, I'm interested in this event. This time is the first external mystery handed to us. But like the classic literature club is now the uh, Sherlock and Watson agency. And yep. they're tasked in by Irisu, who is voiced by, I swear to something that is Alexis Tipton who does uh-huh, Lucina uh-huh, and Fire uh-huh. Emblem. And like, I recognize uh-huh, the voice. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, you you know what I'm talking about. No, I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. Nice coat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Irisu works with the film club and goes to Tanda, I have a dilemma. I need the help of the people that solved the Hyoka case. So long story short, uh, they had a writer who wrote them a, a, a mystery film who got very sick before she could write the ending. So they filmed what they had and they don't actually know who their murderer is. So they kind of unbeknownst to Areki, kind of hire him to just be like, hey, who who did the murder? Who murdered this guy? Yeah, it's all but said, hey, can we get Oreki H- Hotaro in <laughs> to uh, solve this mystery that we've conceived? And it reminded me a lot of Castle. Yeah, which is like, hey, please help us figure this out, man, that does all these benign mysteries. Okay, you seem to run into every mystery and come out ahead. Yeah. Can you do this one? And we might see. Wink, wink, a little bit of a different going abouts in this episode, because usually when we have a mystery kind of brought up, it's Chitanda being interested in something here. We have another party bringing about a mystery to Oreki himself. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're going to see over these next three episodes, I looked it up, by the way, this is a four-parter. Jesus. We're going to see Oreki put in a different situation than what we're used to. Uh, I'm trying to dance around. He has to work with the committee, right? Because he has to work with the AD, the assistant director. He has to work with the PR representative. And he has to work with, was it prop? Yeah, because he 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 says he's not gonna figure this one out. And uh Ibarra, the the oh, I'm sorry, Irisu, is like, all right, how 
how about you just listen to some of the theories that uh, our, our people involved have, and you can just tell us if we're good or not. And they're like, okay, you know, what? I'll agree to that. What here's my prediction is that we have Aba, who's another um, hand introduced. That's like I'm going to take you to the um, the crew, and we're going to talk about it there. Oh, also, the writer Hongo is one of my best friends. We get a series of intercuts of everyone's faces as she talks about how earnest this friend is. So I think that's obviously an important key. But I think a a power of Oriki in this situation is that he can also this is the one time where he's he has creative freedom mm, in mm-hmm, his decision. Mm-hmm. He it's a writing piece. He can actually kind of hypothesize and make it fact. It doesn't have to. We The answer is, first off, it's not what did Hongo intend for the characters? It's what do you think happens? So I think he can actually kind of stretch his muscles a bit here. I'm smiling super so, big right now only because Alex has fallen into the trap of this episode. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, and that's kind of all I'm going to say about this, because talking anymore would kind of give away the, the beat of the these four episodes. Um, I will say to the listeners out there who are at this episode watching, you can figure out who the murderer is here if you look at all the evidence given to you in the uh, uh, the, the little movie that they've made. Um, you can come to the conclusion that every single person involved will come to, including what's going to be Orekis. Okay. So it just involves looking back at the video, playing it through. Right. And analyzing. just know, they do come to a conclusion that is correct. Okay. I want you out there to see if you can come to your own. So you're given all the blocks in this situation. This is one of those ones where they're putting all the blocks in your playpen. You can play a recce right now if you really want to. Hmm. I... I have to go back then. I, I, this is out there to everyone else. I'm worried that I won't be able to figure it out. Oh, it, it's, it's not easy. Uh, there, there's a couple plot points. Uh, and if you're, all right, if you're trying to come up with your own conclusion, the next episode's definitely going to help because okay. it's, it's literally a bunch of people in a room going like, uh, just like we got with the uncle. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody brings forth their facts that they know. And they're all putting it out on the table. We're going to have like a very that episode next. Hmm. But each one of them comes to their own kind of conclusions. And then they'll probably animate each one to give you an idea, but not give you a straight lead. Hmm. OK, I, I have some researching to do. That film was all the right things because, boy, first off, from the um, pretentious name of mystery hmm. to the sound of the uh, boom mic. <laughs> hitting yeah. the camera to the way be- it's filmed too is very interesting they they, yeah. they take like a a very student film-esque like i'm walking with the camera and that's kind of hard to do in animation mm-hmm. but like they, 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 they do it something i love in anime is whenever they replicate depth of field mm-hmm. and when mm-hmm. they have the hand on the doorknob but the door is actually out of focus which is first off i don't know how the students have such a good shallow depth of field <laughs> on their camera what budget do they have hey man they have a really good cameraman they spent it all on the cameraman not on the actors Mm. There's always something to be said about actors playing bad acting. And here they do it exceptionally well, where a lot of the actors are just screaming their lines. So I have a question for you. Answer. So like we said before, this is a four parter. And our next episode is going to be a room full of people tackling this issue and coming to somewhat conclusions. Why do you think this is a four parter? My guess is because we haven't met the director yet. Okay, that's interesting. We still we, we have the, the AD, we have the prop, we have the PR person, we have a producer that was brought on last minute that doesn't feel like she's up to the task. We have the now, writer. Do you feel like the director's going to have any more keyed in because the director didn't have the full script? I think the director is the just based on the way a good mystery is set up. You mm-hmm. have those ten things you need, which I don't know off the top of my head. I think it's Ava. I think I'm just guessing that that we have met the director already. Okay, if we haven't, how do you feel about the writer? The writer. Well, we only sick. know we only know the writer is sick. The writer did not clue in anyone on who. Mm-hmm. So there's obviously some sort of bad blood going on. And I think that's where we're going to go into. We're going to go past the mystery and into why did the writer not cue in anyone else on what happened? OK. Um, did the writer base this off anything? Is there some external struggle? Why is Ava praising the writer so much when mm-hmm. asked simply, mm-hmm. oh, do you know this person? 
So I think we're going to get a little further than that. We're going to have a locked room episode next. Then we're going to go into, oh, but wait, what happened? Maybe we'll meet the writer. Is there actually a writer? I don't know. We'll figure <laughs> things out. Um, so actually, the writer uh, funded the dollars. The writer, <laughs> ma- writer started 4chan. No. I should say, though, uh, Yurisu, the empress, as she's called, is probably one of my favorite side characters in this. I dig her. I like the uh, the uh, single, looks like a like scar across the face hair. Yeah. Uh, I also like her attitude the whole time. Like, she's perfectly fine with Areki not, like, solving this mystery for her. She's like, you know, it's fine. I'll find another way. I just want it. I'm, I'm being a diligent person trying to use all the assets I have around me trying to figure this out. And I can super respect that. She super respects him the whole time. Like even right away, it's like, okay, you don't want to do this. How about this other thing? Now contrast that to contrast that to what uh, Fukube said, which is she's the empress and she snares people into her trap. Mm, interesting that you would catch on to yeah. that. But, but she is going to Ureki going, Ureki, I'd like to know. Mm, so it might also be a part of it. There's there's something going on and I can't wait to see what happens. And uh, you also can tell from the conversation that they have that she doesn't directly ask for Oreki. You're right, Mm because she does just go like, hey, can I get help anywhere? Please. Are you in the classic lit club? I feel like everyone. No, no, no. she says you're in the classic lit club, right? You should bring all of your friends. She might be using a little bit of her empress power on our little uh, unsuspecting Chitanda. Hmm. Uh oh. She might be a little bit more manipulative than you might think. Probably. She was lit very much. It wasn't Karaskuro. It wasn't like Godfather lighting, but she was framed and lit very elegant, suspicious. Mm-hmm. Like, ooh, just, just know that her, I like the play between her and Oreki, like over the next mm-hmm. three episodes or so. Your film was not great. Yeah, I'm fair with that assessment. They, they have a lot of fun there. I'm excited for these next couple episodes, man. Yippee skippy. Oreki's going to hold a gun at some point. <laughs> That's finally happening. This is our new, uh, we get to meet the blonde girl in Silver Spoon. We're going to keep guessing it until it happens. <laughs> I feel like they will try to replicate it. I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm thinking of how that gun will come into play. Because there was, we don't, there was no gun in the movie. Oh, well, we do meet the person, the, the props department manager. That's true. So she's probably like, here's the gun. Here's how we shot the dude's arm off. Can we talk about the, the fake blood? How they made blood look fake in animation? Kyoto animation's astounding. Yeah. <laughs> Everything they do is gold. And I think one thing we have to avoid on the Palm Top podcast is making this the Kyoto animation podcast. Because all they do is great slice of life stuff. Very true. You know, we did we did actually get a Palm Top in <laughs> In our last episode, we could see a palm of blood on it. Oh my god, you're right. That's yes. our new logo. It's the right. Palm Top Podcast. Put, put that counter up. <laughs> one, one palm top. Oh, why is the logo blood red? Don't worry about it. Oh man, I can't wait till we watch uh, End of Evangelion and we get another one. Oops. That's not the good one. <laughs> End of episode. Play the outro, Alex. Do, 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 do. Wait. Da, 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 da. Hey, Alex. When you're editing this... <laughs> I want you to look up. You know what? No, just just look up a, a JoJo character. Specifically, I want you to send me the guy who has the big boy stand in five. What the f*** are you talking about? Exactly. He, he has a fishing pole. What is part five? <laughs>